So Archie and Valerie have a moment in a never before seen deleted Riverdale scene. Clark has sex with another girl but still has the drawing she drew of Lexa. And Empire is back and so is Anika. All of that coming up right now. So what if I told you Archie and Valerie had a moment that made you think completely differently of their current relationship? A moment in which you have never seen before. What if I told you they had a moment that was so powerful that not only would you think differently of their current relationship, but you may actually ship them? What if I told you that? Would you believe me? Well, I hope not, because I'm a goddamn lie. Well, I'm not completely lying. They do have a deleted scene that you guys have never seen before. That much is completely true. The hype surrounding the scene was the complete lie, though. But come on. I had to get you guys pumped up and excited for this video. That's my job as a YouTube creator, to entertain you guys and get you excited by any means possible, even if that means lying through my damn teeth. Now, does that make me a bad person? Maybe. Does that make me a good YouTuber? Absolutely. So in this scene, Archie is playing his little fuckboy guitar with his little fuckboy hands when Valerie comes in to offer her help with Archie's songwriting. And they have this back and forth conversation about Archie trying to play football while also trying to focus on his music at the same time. And the scene ended with him inviting Valerie to come watch him work on his song because apparently Archie is so important and so special that somebody would actually want to do that, I guess. But overall, I thought this scene was pretty irrelevant and pointless. And them cutting it out didn't really take anything away from the ship in any real way. You'd pretty much have to be a really hardcore shipper of this ship to even care a little bit. Do hardcore shippers of this ship even exist? Like, is that a thing? Serious question because I have no idea. I've only had a few people in my comment section say that they really love this ship. And one person even tried to tell me that I should like this ship because Valerie is a woman of color. As if that's supposed to mean something to me. I've never liked liked or disliked anyone because of the color of their skin. Nor have I shipped or not shipped a ship for that reason. So, I mean, yeah, I'm sorry if you for some reason thought differently. Now, all of that being said, I wouldn't say I'm completely against this ship. No, no, I would describe my feelings for this ship as, let's see, how can I put this, non-existent. And so far, the only girl that I think Archie has a real connection with is Veronica. Now, to be fair, though, it's really hard for a fuckboy to gel with anyone. That's like asking a pile of dirt to taste good on a certain food. I mean, sure, you can put that pile of dirt on like a juicy burger, but I I mean, it's still a pile of dirt. It's just in between two buns now. What the hell am I talking about? Anyways, if you want to check out the scene for yourselves, the link will, of course, be in the description box. And if you do for some reason ship these two, let me know. I'm curious to know if your kind does exist. So now let's talk a little bit about the hundred. Oh my god, Smurf, do we have to? Yes, yes, we have to. But only for a minute. And only one small portion of the last episode. Well, not the last episode, because I think the last episode came on last night. I think. I don't even remember which day of the week that this whack-ass show even comes on anymore. Who cares? The only reason I'm even talking about this is because some of my subscribers asked me to. And more importantly, there was a Klexa moment. Yes, they are still having mentions of Klexa, even this deep into season four. I guess this is the part where I show my gratitude. Right there, there you go, buddy. So apparently Clark just gets done having sex with some girl. I forget her name. I like to call her Not Lexa. So after she gets done having sex with Not Lexa, the camera pans in on the drawing that Clark drew of Lexa. 
Lexa. I guess in a way to show us that Clark still cares about Lexa and isn't over her yet. Yeah, well, I'm already over this moment. I can't speak for all Clexa fans, but this pathetic attempt at pandering is not working at all on me. And not only is it not working on me, but quite frankly, it's pissing me off a little bit. Because I feel like that you think that you can win me back just by some small mentions of Lexa here and there. And if you think that this makes up for the way that you killed off Lexa, even a little bit? Think again, J-Fuck. And while we're on the subject, is it true that the 100 got renewed for a season 5? I I guess the Blarks are doing just enough to keep your ratings from plummeting too much, huh? Bless their heterosexual hearts. And for those of you who don't know, I did give out a list of demands to the writers if they ever want me to watch their shitty show ever again. And I think those demands are quite reasonable. Which is, one, bring Lexa back in season five. I mean, that goes without saying. If Lexa never comes back, you can just tear up the rest of that list right now because you're forever dead to me. Number two, an apology to all of Klexa Nation for your disgusting and unforgettable acts of having the baddest toughest, most legendary warrior of all time die by a stray bullet like some peasant on the streets that isn't at all important to the show. And three, I want Bellamy's head on the end of a sword. Let's call it an eye for an eye. Only then will I ever consider watching The 100 again. And if not, I mean, hey, no sweat off my back. I've already moved on from the show, and quite frankly, I haven't had the urge to watch it since season three ended, so whatever. So Empire is back and better than ever. Now, why do I say that? Because the baddest bitch is back on her throne. That's right, ladies and gents. Anika is once again the head of A&R right where she belongs. And how did Cookie take the news? To all of the valuable items of Lucius. And I know some of you may applaud this behavior, but not me. This is exactly why I can't completely get behind Cookie, because she has hood rats in her blood. And to me, acting like a hood rat is almost never justified, nor is it cute. And when they were getting ready to have sex in the end, it really just got my blood boiling. Because all I could think of was, not now, not this time. This crazy bitch just smashed up your whole set. And you want to reward her with some dick? I love angry sex as much as the next person. But there is a limit. You ain't about to smash up my shit and then think you about to get dick down for it. The fuck? So I'm happy they didn't end up doing it, but I'm also mad that it was Cookie that ended up turning it down and not Lucius. Lucius just needs to be with Anika and call it a day. And as far as the rest of the episode, is Andre really stupid enough to try to kill his father? I have to think that there's more going on that we don't know about. God, I hope so. And is Jamal really off the pills for good? I have some real doubts about that. And Jamal is one of my favorite characters, so I really hope he doesn't fall off the deep end because that would just really suck. But let me know what you guys think about all of this in the comment section below. And let me know what shows you guys want me to cover next. But I'm done talking. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this video... You know what to do. But as always, until next time.